Hey everybody, welcome to Bill Sky, the C++ guy, and what we're going to do is today we are going to continue our discussion about file input output in C++, and we're going to talk about complex, more complex files and comma separated value files, which is a subject that I think everybody likes because it solves so many problems. So let's get to it. Now what you see here is you see a I have a an Eclipse project here and basically this is a lot like the previous the project in the previous video on basic files but I've added a few things and one of the major things that I've added was is that you have multiple pieces of data on a single line in the file and let me double click on my customers.txt file and show you what I mean so you can see that the first piece of data is the name of the customer in this case. The next piece of data is a number which happens to be the number of months, their age and the number of months, which is kind of weird, but that's how I did it. And then the next, the third piece of data is their yearly salary. So Thomas the man is 576 months old and he makes $130,000 an hour. Now let's take a look at Tammy the Wonderful. Tammy the Wonderful, first of all, notice Thomas the man doesn't have any spaces in his name and I did that on purpose let's take a look at Tammy the Wonderful well Tammy the Wonderful is 384 months old and makes $165,000 a year Tondalea della Ventimiglia is another person who this time she makes 260 or actually she doesn't make $264 she's 264 months old and she makes 89,500 so that all kind of makes sense right but let's see what happens when we run the program to read that data and let's see why and let's talk about why you see what it what happens happens now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment out all of the code now before I comment out the code I just want to show you the output statement that outputs that data on the same line so you can see that we have the username which is a string that goes out to the file then we have a space then we have the age and months, then we have a space, then we have the yearly salary. So that's how you output multiple pieces of data per line of code. And we did kind of the same code that we did in the last video where we had a first line variable that kept track of whether or not we were on the first line or not. Um, I actually don't think that that code is correct because I forgot to say uh, first line equals false, which should probably go right here. Okay, so now I think it, it's correct. But anyway, that doesn't matter because the file was written correctly. And so with that said, let's now take a look what happens when we read the file. Now I'm going to comment out, as I said a moment ago, I'm going to comment out all of this code right here. And the resulting, or the, what code is left is the code where we open the file, we make sure that it opened correctly, if it did open correctly, we have a while loop that goes until the end of file. And what the while loop does is it reads the username, it reads the age and months, it reads the yearly salary, it prints it to the screen, and then it says, please press enter, and I do a, a, a kin.get, and it just allows you to, the user to press enter. And the reason I did that <clears throat> is I want you to see what values are that we read from the file every time it runs. So let's go ahead and build that and now let's run it. Okay, so I do have the file open. It's not really open, I have it displayed right there. And that's Thomas the Man, 576, 130,000. Looks good. It prints out to the screen with that C out okay. Now I'm gonna press enter and we get Tammy 0, 130,000. Well, but that's not what Tammy the Wonderful is it only read the first word it saw this space and it said well there's no more text to read so I'm going to now go to the reading of the age and months and when it tried to read the age and months it saw the saw the word the and said well wait a minute that's not a number I can't read that into my integer so it goes on to the next read which was reading the yearly salary but the read pointer was still here, so now it tried to read 
100, it tried to read the wonderful into the floating point or the double variable. It couldn't do that. So it kept everything the way it was before. Watch what happens when I press enter. This is an infinite loop. I can keep pressing the enter until the universe ends and it will just, it'll keep going, infinite loop. So we have a real problem here. The main problem is, is that we have spaces in the names. Now, one thing you can do, and I'm gonna press the stop there. One thing you can do, and I can hard code, I can type in or get rid of the spaces. This isn't how data is stored on a computer. It will actually run now. Let me save this. Let me run it. So it'll actually run correctly now. There's Tammy the Wonderful. But how many of you are on Amazon.com or any online service where you have your name and they, they don't run it all together? So that's the problem with an unstructured file like what we saw here before I took out the spaces is that the strings are all different length. You don't know where the beginning of the first string is and the beginning of the second string. That's the case of this right here. You don't even know, the program doesn't even know that that's all to be one single string. So you can do it this way, but you have to really worry about strings. You have to worry about their length, if there's any spaces. How do you deal with something like that? Well, that's where comma separated values come in. And what does a comma separated value file look like? Well, I'm going to I'm going to actually open this up. A comma separated value file is every field, every different piece of data has a comma. And what this does is it tells the program or the programmer that when you read Tammy the Wonderful, keep reading until you get to the comma. Skip the comma and now you're ready to read the age and months. And that goes 384. It stops at the comma, skip the comma, and then read the yearly salary. So that's what comma separated values are all about, is having that comma there. Now, one of the negatives of using comma separated values is your data can't have commas in it. So you could do a, you could do a thing called tab separated values because the tab character on your keyboard is actually a special character. Uh, it has a special ASCII value in the file. But for now, and the code is exactly the same between tab and comma separated values. But for now, let's use this comma separated value method. And let, let's go ahead and code that. So the first of all, how do we actually write out? How do we, how do we create a comma separated value file? Well, I'm going to uncomment all of this code here that I originally wrote. And the reason why I didn't write this with you is because we're going to rewrite it together right here. So what I'm going to do is instead of .txt, I'm going to say .csv. Now, you can put that file extension anything you want. You can make it Fred, Carol, Sarah. It doesn't matter, right? But CSV stands for Comma Separated Value. And pretty much all that code stays the same. Now, as, the use, as I type in the name, as long as it's not equal to negative 99, we get all the other data. And now to actually write it to the file, you, instead of just a space, you put a comma. You don't even need the space after the comma, but I always like putting that in there. And that's all you have to do. That is all you have to do to write out a comma separated value file. So I'm going to comment out my input file because there's a little bit more you have to do when you read a comma separated value file. So you don't have to write a huge amount of code yourself, invent a huge amount of code. And let's see how this works. So I'm going to say Thomas Kincaid. Uh, they are 522 months old and they make $120,000 a year. Now let's do a uh, Tonda Lea Della Venta Miglia. Uh, she's about 346 months old, and she makes, she's done well for herself. She makes $650,000 a year. Oop, I like the 1.65 million. Okay. And let's do one more of Carol Channing. 
And Carol Channing is 874 months old. Good for her. And she is on medic. Or she's on Social Security. So she makes around fifty-six thousand dollars a year. Okay. So we just put in some data. Let's go ahead and end the program. And now let's refresh our Eclipse project. Where's that old refresh? I always lose it. There it is. And there's our customer.csv. Now, notice the icon for that file is different because if I double click on that, it's going to load up my spreadsheet because .csv files are associated with spreadsheets. That's how common they are. So instead of that, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to open with text editor. And now you can see our comma separated value file. There's Thomas Kincaid. Very, very nicely formatted. There's no blank line at the end. There's no blank line at the beginning like we had in our first video. So this is, this is a really nice formatted file. And you can see where every field ends. And by field, I mean piece of data that all on its own means something. So that's the full name for Thomas Kincaid. Also notice how each one can be a little bit different length. And that's because the comma delineates each field. Okay, so with that said, um, and that code was so easy to write. So with that said, what I'm going to do now, because I don't want to have to re-enter all that data, I'm going to comment out that first group of code. And I'm going to uncomment my read code. And we've got some work to do here. We've got a little bit more, because when you read a comma separated value file, it's a little bit more work than writing one. Not too much, though. Okay. So what we're going to do is we open the file. Now we have to end it with CSV, right? So we open the file. We make sure it opened OK. And then we have to do something. And while input file, not end a file, that's great. All right. So what we need to do now is we need to read the entire line, the entire row of data. And to remind you what that is, we need to read this entire line into a variable. That's really all we have to do. And the way that you do that is with the get line. So you simply say get line from input file. And I'm going to type in customer record. Now this needs to be a string, and we haven't defined it yet. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to create a string. So now our variable is defined. And we read that entire thing into memory. Once we read that into the variable customer record, we then have to create what they call a string stream. So I'm going to say string stream, str stream, a record. Now string stream is a data type, and the variable that we're creating is called, oh, not a record, I'm sorry, customer record. So string stream is a data type much like OF stream, IF stream, you know, uh, it, it's just a data type, int, double, it's just a data type, it's C++ only. And what this is doing is it's creating a variable called str stream. Now I could have called that x if I wanted to, um, but I called it str stream. And it's going to take the string that I read from the file and send it to str stream and say, I want you to process this. And the way that you process it is that you say, get line from the str stream username. And you say that I want to get everything up to and not including the comma. Now, I think I've got something wrong here. Let me see. Uh, string, I got a little comment. Let me save and build this and see what my error is. Eclipse is saying that I've got an error. And the reason is, is that string stream needs another include. So I'm going to say pound include s stream. So to use this comma separated value method, you need to have s stream, s stream. And there we go. So now it works great. OK. So the next thing I want to do, that was the username. And it, it ends with a comma. So that's why we put that there. Now we want to do the whole thing with. Um, the numbers. So we've got the, the username done. So let's delete that. 
And I've got an integer and I've got a float. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get line str my variable name for string stream. And you know, I don't want I need to use a different variable name because I can't move a string into a into an integer or a float. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here and I'm just going to say string temp string. And then I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to say put into temp string the string that comes after the full name. So it's going to put it as if it's a string into temp string. And then what I need to do is I need to say age in months is equal to string to integer. That's what STOI is a function, string to integer, temp string. So that's how you grab an integer out of that full line that you read up here that ends with a comma. And we can do the exact same thing with the yearly salary. And instead of STOI, I'm going to say STOF for float, string to float. And I believe that's all we need. So it's a little bit different than just, you know, grabbing the data from the line and stick it in a variable because you've got that comma in there, right? And you want to protect that comma. You don't want to read it. So let's see if this works. First of all, let's see if it builds, and it seems to have built okay. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, well, there's Thomas Kincaid, 522, 12, 120,000. There's Tonda Tondalea Della Ventimiglia, 346, 165,000. What's a shame is that I've memorized those numbers, so I don't have to go look. And then there's Carol Channing, 874, $56,000 a year. So again, Carol's on Social Security. She's been around for a while, so... She's not making as much. But knowing Carol, she's probably got millions in the bank, so who cares? Anyway, enough about Carol. So that's how you read. First of all, that's how you write out a comma-separated value file, and that's how you read it in. Now, I mentioned something earlier about a tab-separated value. So if you're going to have commas in your strings, like let's say the customer, um, let's say the customer name or the username, and maybe that variable isn't a good variable name because it was a customer file. Let's say you're allowed to have commas. And, and in some countries, commas are in the full name. So what if you don't want to use comma-separated values? You would much rather use tab-separated values. Well, a tab-separated value is a little bit different than a comma. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to bring up my web browser. And I'm going to go to ASCII table.com and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and let's take a look at and I don't know if this is going to let me all these pop-up things are just driving me crazy so a comma let's find a comma in the ASCII table now first of all if you don't know what the ASCII table is the ASCII table gosh this drives me nuts does this drive you guys nuts too all of these pop-up ads. Okay, so the ASCII table shows you the actual numeric value of any character on your keyboard. Because the computer doesn't know anything about the letter F, the letter J, or a comma. It knows a number, and there's a number associated with every letter or anything on your keyboard. And so, for instance, the comma is right here. And so the decimal value, the actual decimal value that's stored in your computer's memory that represents a comma is 44. The hexadecimal value is 2C or 2Charlie. The octal is 054. The HTML code is hashtag 44. So there is no such thing as a comma in memory. It is a numeric value, which is what they call the ASCII value. And every operating system 
well, I shouldn't say every operating system, but there are operating systems that you don't use ASCII. They might use Unicode. They might use EBCDIC. There's all kinds of different ways of converting something that you see on the screen to how it's actually stored in memory, and it's always stored as a number. Everything is stored as a number. There's no such thing as strings or characters inside of your computer. They're all numbers. They're displayed to you as characters or strings because you're a stupid human and you don't understand what all those numbers are. So that's what, it's kind of like the Rosetta Stone of, 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 of characters inside of your computer, the ASCII table. So we're looking at 44, the comma, that's the comma. However, there is a nine. Nine stands for, stands for tab. And so instead of typing a comma, you press your tab button. And that will actually, that will actually store the number nine, hexadecimal nine or decimal nine, in this case hexadecimal as well, in memory. So this will allow you to have commas in names. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to convert this. I'm going to comment out. I'm going to uncomment my code here. And what I'm going to do is instead of CSV, I'm going to put TSV, tab separated values. And everywhere we, we see a comma, backslash 9. That means send a tab to the file. That's what backslash 9 is. You could say backslash 0, 9 if you want, but it's backslash 9. And also notice it's a single quote. That's because it's a single byte. We want to send a single byte, which happens to have the value of 9. So let's save and build that. Okay, great. So now we're writing the data out to the file as a tab separated value backslash 9, why backslash 9? Because 9 means horizontal tab. All right? So now we have to read it as a horizontal tab. So instead of a comma, I'm going to put a backslash 09 there in the delimiter. So every time I do a get line of the str stream, I separate it by the backslash 9. Now I'm not overriding my customers.csv because I'm saving it as a TSV. I have to make sure I read it as a TSV. So I think I have an error here. So the problem here is that anything that has double quotes around it is considered a full string. So that backslash 09 is not the, the ASCII code for tab. So what we need to do is we need to change this to backslash t. Backslash t is another way of representing the tab character. So single quote backslash t. Single quote backslash t. And since we're doing it there, let's go up here where we created it and let's do the same thing. Backslash t. Backslash t. So again, the backslash when you're in a, in a, as a char, which is what the single quotes represent, that's an escape character, and the letter T means do a tab. So let's save and build that. All right, great. So make sure we're doing TSV for tab separated values. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and run this. And what I'm going to do is I want to keep the data kind of the same. So I'm going to open up that file, and I'm going to type in the same data. So I'm going to type Thomas the man, 576. 130,000. Tammy the Wonderful, 384, 165,000. Tondalea della Venta Miglia, 264, 89,500. Now let's do one more, and this time let's do a name with a, with a comma in it. So John Kirby the third and John is uh, I don't know 256 months old and they make around uh, 65,000 all right minus 999 okay so we didn't comment out the read code so there's Thomas the man that worked there's Ta Tammy the wonderful that worked 
That's tondelea delaventiniglia, that worked. Now here's the name with the comma in it. It worked. So because we converted this to a tab-separated value file, it's now not looking for commas anymore. It's looking for that backslash T, that ASCII 9 number in the, or letter in the file. Now let's right-click and say Refresh. And there's our tab-separated value. Again, notice TSV files are associated with spreadsheets. If I double-clicked on this, which I'll go ahead and do, my spreadsheet opens up. And in this case, it happens to be uh, Libre Numbers or Calc. And you can see that spreadsheet opened up. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just right-click on it and say Open with Text Editor. And the funny thing is that you can't actually see the tab in the file in a normal tab uh, uh, text editor unless you turn on hidden turn on hidden characters. So when you clips, let's go ahead and see that because I would like you to actually see the little tab character there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Window Preferences. I'm going to expand General. I'm going to expand Editors. Uh, where do I want to go? I'm going to expand text editors. Click on text editors and it says, where is that little puppy? Uh, show white space characters. And I'm going to say apply and close. And now it's kind of hard to see. I'll zoom in here. But you can see this little funny little greater than greater than sign. It's not the same as the greater than, greater than sign in, the, sign in C++, the streaming operator, but that is a tab character, and that's what separates it. So it's really no different than a comma, other than the fact that you can't see it. So there you go. There's comma-separated values. We took a comp more, more complicated file that had multiple fields, multiple pieces of data on the same line, fraught with problems if you do that. We converted it to a comma-separated value file, then we created it to convert it to a tab separated value file and now the thing is working absolutely wonderful hope to see it in our next video